Welcome back to part three of this series on the factions of the Burning Crusade. Hello everyone, my name is Icosiol, and today we're going to finish up with the factions of Shatrath City, the rewards they give, and the fastest way to grind your way to Exalted. In the last episode, we discussed the three main factions within Shatrath City, as they vie for power and favor with the Nauru. Today we're going to talk about some of the great defenders of Shatrath City, as well as Adal's own faction, and a faction that you will see near the end of Classic TBC, known as the Shattered Sun Offensive. Timestamps for this video are provided in the video description below, so that you can skip to the information you need. Now let's get this one started with the Shatar. The meaning of the word Shatar is born of light in the Draenei tongue, and is the primary faction within Shatrath led by Adal. The Shatar are aided by the Aldor and Scryers in defending the city, as well as taking the fight to the Burning Legion that threatens Outland and Azeroth. In order to accomplish this mission, the Shatar have helped the Aldor reclaim and rebuild Shatrath city after its destruction by the Fell Horde, and welcomed Vorenthal the Seer and his defecting Blood Elves. Today, the Shatar are the primary strategist in the war against the Burning Legion and Illidan Stormrange. Almador is the Shatari Quartermaster who is located here in the Terrace of Light, where you can purchase any of these items when you reach Revered or Exalted. A reputation of friendly and honored is pretty simple to get, and the rewards consist of many patterns, formulas, and designs. At the time of making this video, it's unknown if the Warp Forged Key will be available at Honored or Revered in TBC Classic. Before you begin, you will want to confirm your allegiance with either the Eldor or Scryers by speaking to Adal and taking the tour of Shatrath City. This will bring you to neutral with both your chosen faction and the Shatar. From neutral to Honored, your reputation gains with the Shatar are shared with your Aldor or Scryer Mark or Signet Turnins but you will receive only half the reputation towards the Shatar. Once you're honored with the Eldor or Scryers, you can start completing their quest and continue your turn-ins as you get them. If you're in a hurry to reach honored with the Shatar, you can simply purchase the marks or signets you need from the auction house. Remember that the marks of Kill Jaden and the Firewing signets will no longer count for reputation once you reach honored. Now that you're honored, it's time to start completing all the quest lines that directly grant Shatar reputation. You'll find these all over Outlands, and listed here are some of the quests that will get you started. Completing all of the quest lines will get you fairly close to Revered, and once they're all done, there's only one way for you to reach Exalted from this point. That is by repeating Tempest Keep dungeon runs in the Mechanar, Botanica, and Architraz. You can run these dungeons on either normal or heroic mode, and if you're geared enough for heroic, I would suggest that in order to begin collecting badges of justice. Continue this process until you finally reach Exalted with the Shatar. The Shatari Skyguard are the air wing defense of the Shatar in Shatrath City. They defend Shatrath from the attackers in the hills above, as well as the Arakoa of Terakar in the Skedis Peaks. There are two outposts of the Skyguard, and they're located in the northern parts of the Skethel Mountains and near Overlaw. You will start your reputation at neutral with the Shatari Skyguard. The rewards you can purchase from the Shatari Skyguard are a bit different from the other factions, as there's not much gear for you to obtain. At Revered, there's two cloaks that you can purchase that can reduce your fall speed, and once you reach Exalted, you get access to two epic trinkets and another ray pet. Of course, the main purpose for farming this rep to Exalted is for the nether ray mounts that come in a variety of colors. To purchase these items, you will need to speak to Quartermaster Grella, who is located here in the Skethel Mountains of Terracar Forest. If I was to describe absolutely every step you could take in building your reputation with this faction, this would be an hour-long video, so for the sake of time, I'm just going to share with you the basics of farming this rep. 
Your first step is speaking with Eula, the recruitment officer, who is found next to the Flight Master Neutral in Shatrath City. Speaking to her opens up quests that sends you to the Barrier Hills above Shatrath, as well as a daily called Fires over Skedis. Also found in one of the three cages at the top of the trees in Skedis is a Skyguard prisoner who offers a daily escort quest called Escape from Skedis. At Blackwind Landing, Skyguard Handler Desac will have a quest where you feed a Nether Ray. This opens up a direct flight path between Blackwind Landing and the Skyguard base in Blades Edge Mountains. This doesn't become available until you're at least honored. Your main quest line starts with Skyguard Medic Severin, who is located at Blackwind Landing in Terracar. This begins the Terox Downfall quest chain, which is a series of seven quests that will earn you about 1800 Skyguard reputation. If all you do are the repeatable daily quest in Skedis and Ogrelaw, it will take you about 37 days to go from friendly to exalted with the Skyguard. Now, it's possible to get 27,000 reputation in 13 hours if you farm all the mobs in Skedis and turn in the repeatable Shadow Elixir quest. Additionally, when you're under the effects of the Elixir, you farm the time lost mobs for the time lost scrolls used to summon the mini bosses in the area. When the bosses are killed, you can collect and turn in their claws and beaks for 350 rep. When you get the time lost offering, you can summon Terok, who gives you 500 rep when killed. Doing this over and over will net you about 2000 reputation per hour. The Shattered Sun Offensive, or SSO for short, did not become available until patch 2.4, so you won't see this faction until the Fury of the Sunwell phase of Classic TBC. The SSO is an army of Blood Elves and Draenei who are combating Kael'thas and trying to end his attempt to summon Kill Jaden with the Sunwell. The Isle of Quail Danas is where the Sunwell is located, and so the SSO centers its operations on the Isle and pleads for the Eldor and the Scryers to join forces to prevent Kill Jaden's arrival, which would end in the extermination of all life on Azeroth. Eldara Dawnrunner is the SSO Quartermaster and she is located here on the Isle of Quail Danas. From friendly to honored, there are only two enchanting formulas and rations that are available. Once you reach Revered, you can get a whole slew of new epic jewel crafting designs as well as many rare quality weapons and a helm enchant. Once you reach Exalted, you will be able to purchase epic neck pieces, shields, and new alchemy recipes. The Shattered Sun Offensive is a unique server-wide event that takes place at the end of the Burning Crusade storyline. The event is four phases, with quest and daily quest becoming available and being removed as the server advances through each phase. If your goal is to gain reputation as fast as possible, you're going to run Heroic Magister's Terrace once a day, and then run it on normal as many times as you can, killing every mob in sight. I highly suggest that you take the time to first complete the available daily quest to help your server progress through the event, as well as needing to complete the quest Hard to Kill to get that heroic mode attunement to Magister's Terrace. This all begins with Phase 1 with the Shattered Sun staging area and reclaiming the Sun's Reach Sanctum. There's two daily quests called Erratic Behavior and the Sanctum Wards, which both count towards the objective. Once Phase 1 is complete and the Sanctum has been secured, these two quests will be replaced by the dailies Further Conversions and Arm the Wards. Phase 2 involves the retaking of the Sunreach Armory. Along with the two previous dailies you can complete, you will now have the daily quest called The Battle for the Sun's Reach Armory and Distraction at the Dead Scar. Over in Shatrath City, Exarch Nasun is creating a portal to the Isle of Quel'Thanas and he has a daily called Intercepting the Mana Cells to help in this task. When the portal is complete, that daily will be replaced by maintaining the Sunwell portal. Additionally, back at Sun's Reach Sanctum, another daily becomes available from Astromancer to Marion called Know Your Ley Lines. Once the armory is retaken, four PvP armor vendors, two quest givers, and a badge of justice vendor, Smith Hotha, will spawn. 
Also, the two daily quests will be replaced by The Battle Must Go On and The Airstrikes Must Continue. Phase 3 marks the final location that needs to be reclaimed and that's Sun's Reach Harbor. The daily quests that begin with this phase are Intercept the Reinforcements and Taking the Harbor. Back at the Armory, work has begun on building a forge and anvil for Smith Hotha. Making ready is the daily quest to complete this task, and once the forge and anvil have been made, it will be replaced by two more dailies called Atamal Armaments and Don't Stop Now. Once the harbor has been taken, its two dailies will be replaced by Crush the Dawnblade and Keeping the Enemy at Bay, ushering in the final phase. Phase 4 has you helping Marna set up an alchemy lab for the offensive. The daily quest Discovering Your Roots is what helps the server advance this goal. Once the lab has been created, Discovering Your Roots will be replaced by the dailies Open for Business and Rediscovering Your Roots, and open up a reagents vendor. Also available during this phase are donation dailies called a Charitable Donation and a Magnanimous Benefactor, which is only available to those who are exalted with the SSO. All donations go towards the Memorial of the Fallen being built, and once complete, a Charitable Donation Daily will be replaced by your continued support for those who are not yet exalted. Once all of the objectives are complete, Hiru will spawn and provide a zone-wide buff for everyone including those inside the Magister's Terrace with Kiru's Song of Victory. Along with all of those dailies to earn rep and help progress your server in the event, you also have one-time quests you can complete for even more reputation. Starting at neutral, you can begin with Crisis at the Sunwell, which is for those allied with the Aldor, and Duty Calls for those allied to the Scryers. This leads into three Magister's Terrace dungeon quests that culminate with Hard to Kill, which awards you the Heroic Mode Attunement for the dungeon. The remaining four quests will become available as you increase your reputation with the SSO from Friendly to Exalted, but remember that they do not progress your server through the event. Continue doing your dailies through each phase, grind Magister's Terrace runs, and you'll reach Exalted quickly. Thank you very much for watching part 3 of this classic Burning Crusade faction reputation series. Next week in part 4 we will talk about some of the neutral and minor factions of this expansion such as the Sporgar, Ogre Law, and the Consortium. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Icosial Classic WoW where I post updates on my stream schedule. If you're interested in more classic content you can click on any of these links here. Thank you again for watching and just remember that the Monument of the Fallen is not a statue that you can tear down once built because it's pixels. <laughs> <laughs>